One of the challenges we've always had is how do we document the success of the work we're doing? We're struggling to figure out what the right data sets are, how we can measure the impact of a comprehensive effort at community change. We know it intuitively, we can tell some stories, but do we have the data really show that over time we're making a difference? We know that the work that CDCs do implicitly impacts the social determinants of health. So through partnerships with public health, now more than ever, CDCs have the opportunity to leverage health data to make these implicit connections explicit. The way I would envision uh, a CDC um, partnering with the health department might be to give us a call and say, we're thinking about developing this project. And here's what, here's what that scope might look like. And we'd like some advice on what are the right health outcomes to look at. Is there anything else we need to know about this particular area? Our staff are really, really helpful in terms of trying to help somebody walk through, think through a process. We have been doing a lot of these things called health impact assessments. Uh, and health impact assessments are a great way to try to understand how a proposal in a community, for example, a new housing development, um, could impact that, that community's health. And so we've seen community development corporations as really natural partners to be engaging in these health impact assessment projects with because I think they understand that it's an important ingredient of the work that they're doing. They just need a way of articulating it. And HIAs is a really good way of sort of at the nitty gritty level, working with their community, understanding how the work that they're doing is going to impact their lives and then carrying that through a process to understand health impacts. Recognizing the importance that your zip code can have for your health, we decided to do a project looking at how community development and health were linked. And that project is the Community Investment Tax Credit Health Impact Assessment, or CITC HIA. There is evidence-based descriptions of how community development corporation activities link through pathways that we described to health outcomes. The CITCHIA report can also be useful to community development corporations because it includes resources embedded within it to go and get more data. So you can have data that are from big databases or other reports that have been collected on place-based levels, so at very small geographic levels such as the community level, looking at, for example, very specifically how affordable housing in itself can then impact health. And those other reports provide very very specific recommendations that community development corporations can then use as a tool when going and implementing these things. The Prevention and Wellness Trust in Massachusetts gives us an opportunity to look at new models of care. How do we bring communities and clinical together and link the work that we're doing so that communities are places where people are healthier and that the resources we use are to develop healthier communities versus money being spent on expensive medical care. This is something where you've got activities within a community as varied as uh, uh, home visits for asthma or snow removal around areas where seniors live. So can we say that the, snow, the new snow removal po policy led to fewer falls from seniors? The goal of, of what we're attempting to do is to create the, the data infrastructure so that we can answer those questions. So I think that this is an opportunity for CDCs to be involved in a conversation that for which they have expertise and that we've designed the, the forum for the conversation to take place in which all parties have something relevant to say to each other. So I would, I would again, encourage them to get involved in this because it's a great opportunity for them to, again, uh, demonstrate their effectiveness, but also measure the impact of what they're doing in clinical terms. The purpose of the Environmental Public Health Tracking Portal is to provide ready access uh, to health and environmental data uh, for a whole range of people. Um, in Massachusetts, we made specific efforts uh, to provide uh, small resolution data, uh, knowing that whether it was a local public health official, an advocacy group, or a community development corporation, 
someone would need access to data at a neighborhood level. The landing page for the Environmental Public Health Tracking Portal gives the appearance of a tree uh, with many leaves, each leaf uh, providing information for a different type of category. So, for example, the leaf that's probably of greatest interest to CDCs, it's really the health data. So when we click on health data, that brings up uh, a list of health outcomes. And if we click on the cancer tables, then, then we will get to the next screen that basically shows us how to map cancers. So we'll pick a particular uh, cancer. Let's say we want to look at lung cancer in both males and females. We want to look at, let's, let's say Abington. It's the first town. If we look at the town of Abington, the standardized incidence ratio for lung cancer is 130, or 30% 30 higher than we'd expect it to be based on the statewide average. But then, because uh, CDCs and others want to know not just what's happening across a whole community, but they want to know what's happening in the area of that community that they want to develop in. Uh, and so you can click on the view census tract standardized incidence ratios. And what you'll see is that one of the things that might be of great interest uh, to CDCs in this particular uh, example is that you can click on things like the mass DEP tier classified 21 east sites. If you're going to develop in an area, you probably want to know whether or not there are um, hazardous waste sites. So one of the other newer features that's soon to come uh, to the portal uh, relates to uh, uh, specifically uh, looking at climate change and climate effects. Uh, these uh, particular issues will be of extraordinary value to CDCs uh, because developing a road in a certain area might be important uh, to think about if they're near a coastal area, if through uh, erosion uh, that particular road may no longer be there. And if that's an important access road to a development project, then one needs to think about that. Uh, similarly, there will be other areas, particularly out in the western part of the state, uh, where the likelihood that flooding uh, is going to become more problematic is really going to have an impact on development doesn't mean you can't develop, but it might mean that you need to move things to a slightly higher ground. So the, all of those types of things, I think, will be critically important and valuable to CDCs as they move forward uh, using this type of a portal. In order to get information out about public health uh, issues, the health conditions within communities that might be useful to CDCs, we worked on a partnership. We worked in partnership with uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council on the OutHealthyMass.org website. Uh, we've provided uh, a lot of the internal statistical information. So every community, all 351 communities in Massachusetts, are represented. We have information from all chronic diseases. We've got information on births, deaths related to specific health outcomes, and we wanted to look at infrastructure information. And that's what that's what MAPC could provide to it. So we needed to put those two pieces of information together in order to provide as complete a picture of health and those things that impact health. And so the ourhealthymouse.org was our attempt to do that. I think of one of the examples are um, concerns that residents have had around a coal plant that recently closed here in Salem. And there's been a lot of talk about how to move forward with a new uh, gas plant that's going to be developed in a way that is not going to be a detriment to the health of the community. So in the case of Salem, when we're thinking about the redevelopment of a coal-fired power plant to a, to a different source, um, we can begin to think about maybe what some of the air quality impacts could have been related to that look at the literature and see what those connections are to health outcomes. So in the case here, if we're seeing that there's connections in the literature for um, respiratory diseases and kind of leading to kind of coronary or pulmonary events, we can have a baseline here to begin look at what that case is. Um, similarly, as we, as we scroll down the page here too, we can also just think about maybe some of the other situations. So maybe the land that's needed for that redevelopment is not as large in size as what the existing development is. What is that land going to be turned over to? So in the case of fruits and vegetables and thinking about people's daily exercise. Are there ways that things can be built into the environment and considered as part of the redevelopment planning process for such as access to healthy food or the ability to bike and walk and be physically active in that neighborhood? Um, and again, other pieces of data you could use in that same argument is to look at, again, the grocery store prevalence in the area. 
Um, but you could also look at the availability of multifamily homes, single family homes, and see if that mixture that would be needed to meet the affordability of that area. So then the last piece towards the bottom of the page is looking at social indicators too. So there's two items that are called out here with the visualizations, one being uh, linguistic isolation. So that may help guide and, and maybe reinforce some of the needs that may exist in terms of how you communicate while the redevelopment process is going on um, and what opportunities may come afterwards. And in that same vein, looking at educational attainment and thinking about if the educational background of those that live in the area, those that be looking for the job opportunities that are presented by that new use, do they meet what's going on there too? Using that both to understand where the right mix is, but also whether or not there's other kind of workforce needs that might be needed in that area too. I would add that some of these things may not always be thought of explicitly as public health related issues, but these are determinants that as the pathways within the Community Investment Tax Credit HIA health impact assessment show, is that these are connections and these kind of begin to think about how these determinants play into the health outcomes that our residents see and that others see in the area. The Boston Indicators Project began actually way back in 1997 to kind of create a shared vision of success for Boston in the year 2030, which is the city's 400th anniversary, and to really establish a, a framework to democratize data and access to information uh, so that we can track progress on those shared civic goals over time and to help foster informed public discourse. Our goal is to really um, present the data and information in a way that should be accessible to just about anybody. One of the great ways to begin to access uh, the kind of broad range of data about your community is to look at our community snapshots. Um, and you can select out any of the 101 cities and towns. Uh, since I'm focused on Boston, I might actually just select out Boston. But it's a pretty quick way to look at some key indicators about demographics, civic vitality, education, employment, who's employed there and where, um, really across all of our sectors. So looking at housing, energy and environment, and all of these are, are totally interactive and actually contain a number of different sub indicators. So if you're just interested in housing, you can start to look at indicators like uh, housing cost burden, subsidized housing inventory, building permits and their change over time. And, and kind of get the data and, and graphics. It's all printable and pretty easily accessible. But if you're really looking to start to even get deeper than that, you can start with the visualization gallery, um, which is where anybody who comes and registers and signs on with the data common has access to um, start to make their own maps where you can select your unique geography, uh, look at the key indicators, um, whether you want to be looking at population demographics, educational attainment, employment, and then you can start to actually layer on different geographies like where are the community health centers, where are uh, the arts facilities, where are the, the transit stations. I think it's important for CDCs to look at health because if they can translate this into more useful metrics, so they're talking to more parts of the community or more potential partners, and they can express the outcomes in health terms or in other terms that are relevant to whoever they're talking to, they have a better argument for the work that they do. And with the Affordable Care Act uh, now really pushing to bend the cost curve and really putting a lot more emphasis on prevention rather than treatment or in addition to treatment, uh, now is the time to move a few steps further back on the social determinants of health and really create healthy environments where people can thrive. And, uh, and we think the health industry has, has recognized that and they're ready to partner with us to really take full advantage of those opportunities, to leverage those opportunities and to break out of the silos that I think have been holding the field back and really create a much stronger community development sector than we've ever had and one that's going to have the kind of impact that we've all been hoping to see in terms of transforming neighborhoods and lives.